Number 42, Archimedes' principle can be used to calculate the density of a fluid as well as that of a solid. Suppose a chunk of iron with a mass of 390 grams in air is found to have an apparent mass of 350.5 grams when completely submerged in an unknown liquid. Letter A, uh, what mass of fluid does the iron displace? So uh, number 40, we talk about the concepts in detail. I'm just going to use the formulas from here on out, all right? But if you uh, would like to, and I highly recommend uh, a detailed discussion on why these formulas come about, please check out number 40. So we have the mass of the uh, fluid, okay? Mass of the fluid displaced will be equal to the mass of the object that displaces that fluid in air divided by, excuse me, subtracted by the apparent mass of that object in the fluid, okay? So I need to know two things, right, in order to solve for the mass of the fluid. And fortunately, they told it to us, right? The mass of the object here in air, they told us was 390, 390 grams, subtracted by then the apparent mass, uh, which is 300, 350.5. And so now we can just find the mass of the fluid, right? That was displaced, so just take 390 subtracted by 350.5, and we get a value of 39.5. So here is 39.5, and that is in terms of grams, because we were using grams. So that's the mass of the fluid. So now for letter uh, B, let's see what it says. What is the volume of iron using its density as given in the table? All right, so the density given of iron in the table is going to be 7.8 grams per uh, milliliter. And uh, if we write out the formula for density, right, just relating it to mass and volume, we realize that the density of iron will be equal to the mass of iron, all divided by then the volume of the iron. Okay, so we are asked to find the volume of the iron, so why don't we just cross multiply here. So we have the volume of the iron is going to be equal to the mass of the iron divided by then the density of the iron. Okay, we're using the density right from the table. And what's the mass of the iron we're gonna use? Well, the mass of iron in air. Don't use the mass, don't use the apparent mass, you gotta use the actual mass, okay, in air. So this is gonna be then the volume of the iron will equal um, mass of the iron. So that was 390 grams divided then by the, um, just be careful, the mass units have to be the same. If you're using gram in your density, you better be using gram in your mass. And that's divided by now 7.8 grams per uh, milliliter. So in terms of then the volume that's going to get spit out, it's in terms of milliliters. So when we do the division here, it's 390 divided by 7.8. So it's 50, right? So there's going to be 50 milliliters. And you can do three decimal places, whatever, sig figs. So milliliters, okay? This is the volume of the iron by using the density from your table. Now, last but not least, let's move on to letter C. Calculate the fluid's density and identify it. All right. So the important finding here, remember, and we talked about this before, that the volume of water, or I should say fluid because we don't know whether it's water, right? The volume of the fluid displaced will equal the volume of the object submerged. Okay. This is always, this is true assuming the object is submerged. This is always true. Fully submerged. Not partially. Fully. So... Uh, what we realize now is we're asked to find and calculate the density of this particular fluid. So in order to do that, I'm going to start with this equation on the upper right-hand side, right? That says that the density of the fluid should equal the mass of the fluid divided by the volume of the fluid. Well, in order to find density, we got to know these two things. Do we know the mass of the fluid that was displaced? Yeah, we do, right? That, that's what we found over here. That was part A. Do we know the volume of the fluid that was displaced? Well, we didn't calculate that directly, right? But remember, we calculated the volume of iron. And if iron is fully submerged, we know that the volume of iron submerged is equal to the volume of the fluid that was displaced. So basically, okay, this, uh, well, I'm using different subscripts here. So let me let me just use, uh, let me just change these subscripts now. Even though they're, they're fine, I just want to make it specific for this problem. Um... So we could say that the the volume of the uh, the volume of the fluid is then equal to the volume of the iron. Okay, so I don't know this value, but I realize that it's equal to right the volume of the iron, and I know the volume of the iron, so I know the volume of the fluid. Hopefully, you follow that train of logic. 
or I could just take this and just substitute it on into the equation. Doesn't really matter. There's a whole bunch of ways to manipulate this thing. Um, so here we have the density of the fluid will be equal to the mass of the fluid divided by then the volume of the iron. So we know everything, now we just plug everything in, right? So the density of the fluid is gonna be the mass. So that was 39.5, we calculate from part A, divide that now by the 50, all right? And the density now, just be careful with your units, the density of the fluid is going to be 39.5 divided by 50. So it's 0 0.79, all right, 0 0.79, 0 0.79, 0 0.79, that looks like a negative, 0 0.790, 0, maybe you got three sig figs, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, this is going to be grams per milliliter, all right, because of the units we used. And then you got to identify it. So it uh, should be, I think if you go to the, you look it up on a table or whatever, it should be from, you should be using the same table here as the one in your book. Uh, you'll realize it says ethyl alcohol, a.k.a. ethanol. All right, so that's the fluid, ethanol. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Check out number 36 and number 40. They should help a lot too. Thank you.